Okay, next up is stationary or turning points. And you've come across this idea of turning points at GCSE, where you would look at quadratics um, at the bottom or the top part of that arch or that dip. Stationary just means that it is where it's not moving or it has a gradient of zero, which is what I've written here. A stationary point is where the gradient is zero, i.e. the first derivative is equal to zero. Now just think about what that actually means. If the gradient is zero, we know that lines which have a zero gradient are completely flat like this. So you could have a stationary point on this curve at this point here where the gradient is zero. A stationary point means that it is zero. If you drew a tangent there, it would be perfectly flat. And this is referring to one of the three types of stationary point, which is the maximum or the plural maxima. It could also be at the bottom of a, like a bump in one of these graphs as well, which we could call a minimum. And that's the second type, which is minimum. Now, I've called this a local maximum because although this looks like it's the maximum in this area, it is only the maximum in this local area of the graph. If you look as the graph goes all the way across here, it's actually going to be even higher up over this side. It's way higher up than over this bit. So this bit over here is where we're starting to show that it is not going to be the overall maximum here. It's just the local and the local minimum. And if this graph actually continued, it would be going all the way down here, it would actually become lower than this minimum. So we're just calling it a local minimum for this area. So let's just read what my note says. It's called a local minimum because it's the function's largest output within that vicinity, within that area. Functions may also have a global maximum, i.e. the maximum output across the entire function. But this particular function I've got here doesn't have a global maximum because the output keeps increasing up to infinity. And it similarly has no global minimum as with all cubics. So there's no global maximum because this is just going to keep going forever and ever up towards infinity. And this is going to keep going down towards negative infinity. So it doesn't actually have a global for the whole function, a maximum or a minimum, but it does have one here. Um, at this point for the max and this point down here for the minimum. And we're going to look at points of inflection in a separate video that will just be coming up. So let's try this. It says find the coordinates of the turning points of this function. Now, as soon as you see turning points, this should instantly set t tell you that either f dash x is equal to zero or dy by dx is equal to zero. A turning point has zero gradient or has a gradient of zero. So y equals x cubed plus 6x squared minus 135x. I'm now going to differentiate it. So I'm going to pull that power down and reduce the power by 1. I'm going to pull that power down and reduce the power by 1. And I'm just going to get rid of the x for this bit here. Now, because it's a turning point, we've just written this. But because it's a turning point, we know that dy by dx has got to be equal to zero. In other words, 3x squared plus 12x minus 135 has got to be equal to zero. And you've all got quadratic equation solvers on your calculator. So you'll put in 3, 12, and minus 135. And we get the answers that x is either equal to 5 or x is equal to minus 9. But I'm wondering if you noticed it said coordinates, which means you need an x and you need a y. So if x equals 5, we can find out what y is by using the original function that I've got. So I'm going to do 5 cubed plus 6 times 5 squared minus 135 times 5. Let's have a look. So we're going to do 5 cubed plus 6 times 5 squared minus 135 times 5 and we get minus 400. So one of the turning points is going to be 5 minus 400. And the other one is when x is equal to minus 9. y would be equal to minus 9 cubed plus 6 times minus 9 squared minus 135 times by minus 9. Let's see. I'm actually just going to go back in and replace these with minus 9s. And we get 972. OK. So that's 972. So the other turning point is going to be minus 9, 972. So let's put this on Desmos. So that's going to be x cubed, 6x squared, minus 135x. x cubed, 
plus 6x squared minus 135x. And we think the turning points are at this point up here, which is minus 9 and 972. Fantastic. And 5 and minus 400. So you can get this Desmos app and you can literally just tap those maximum and minimum points. Now, the question hasn't asked us to find out if they are maximum or minimum, but that's what we're going to be doing later on in this exercise. But for now, we have just found those two coordinates. Pretty good. OK, let's try another one. This one wants us to find the least value of this. Least value means that it is a minimum point. And a minimum is a turning point. And if it's a turning point, then we know that f dash x is equal to 0. And we're going to do two methods. The first method I've already said is differentiation. So we're going to differentiate it. When I get the x squared will become 2x, the minus 4x will become minus 4. And I want this to be equal to 0 because it's a turning point. So f dash x is going to be 0. In other words, 2x minus 4 is equal to 0. 2x is equal to 4. Or x is equal to 2. So if x is equal to 2, the value of this would be f of 2, which is going to be 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 9. So that's 4 minus 8 plus 9. That is going to be 5. So the least value is 5. Now, that's one method, which is differentiation. The second method, you technically know how to do this already. It's a quadratic, this. So because it's a quadratic, we know the shape of the quadratic is going to be something like this shape. And we just want to find out what is that minimum value. I'm hoping that you're telling me this second method is going to be using completing the square. Remember that completing the square will tell you the minimum point. So if we've got that f of x is x squared minus 4x plus 9, I'm going to complete the square, so it's going to be x minus 2 squared minus 4 plus 9, which is x minus 2 squared plus 5. And we know from this thing that we've got here that it is going to be a minimum point because of the shape of the graph rather than a maximum. And the minimum point is going to be when x is equal to 2, which you can extract from this bit here, that the overall function has a value of 5. So the minimum point is 2, 5. So the least value of the function is 5. And you can see the, the parity of these things, the fact that they share some of that information. So we said the minimum point here is 2, and that was when x was equal to 2. And then we get that the least value was 5, which we got in this point here. So two different ways of doing this. Really, the theme of this um, exercise is going to be differentiation. But obviously, it's worth, worth remembering other techniques that we've learned about earlier on in the course. So we're going to just do one more finding a turning point question, and then we're going to split this video into another bit. So find the turning point. Remember, a turning point, dy by dx equals 0. So let's write it in proper form first. x to the um, root of x is x to the half minus x. And I'm going to differentiate this so that I'm going to pull the power down to get a half. And I'm going to reduce that power by 1. And then when I differentiate the x, it just becomes a 1. So I want a half x to the minus a half minus 1 to be equal to 0. So that's a half so x to the minus a half will be equal to 1. I'll double both sides so that I get 2, like this. And I'm probably going to write it um, in its square root form. So this is 1 over the square root of x is equal to 2. Multiply up by the square root of x, like this. Divide by the 2, so that I get this. And then I'm going to square both sides. A half squared is a half times a half. So that is that x is equal to a quarter. Now that I know that x is equal to a quarter, I can find out the value of y. The value of y is going to be the square root of x minus x. So this is when x is equal to a quarter. I'll find out what y is so I can get the coordinate pair. Now the square root of a quarter, that is the square root of 1 over the square root of 4. So that's just going to be 1 over 2 minus a quarter. And a half minus a quarter is a quarter that we've got here. So the coordinates of the turning point are a quarter, a quarter. And let's see what this looks like on Desmos. So it's root x 
minus x. So y equals root x minus x. We're going to need to do some real zooming in here. And it wants there to be, where is this turning point? So let's zoom in. This turning point is here, which is at a quarter, a quarter. You can see it's a turning point. It's actually a maximum turning point, And the gradient there is zero. If you drew a tangent, it would be perfectly horizontal and it would be flat. So always check your answers with Desmos. It's going to give you a much better understanding of how graphs are actually working here. And we'll come back in just a second and we'll do some stuff on the third type of um, stationary points.